Hi, thanks for joining us today. If this ministry has impacted your life, we want to hear about it. You can send us your story at amen at vineyardchurch.com. Also, we would love if you would partner with us financially. You can go to vineyardchurch.com and click the Give Online or text your donation amount to 757-230-2110. Now here's this week's message. Good to see you guys this morning. Now, how many of you guys have noticed the uh, seasons are changing outside? Raise your hand if you've noticed that, right? Yeah, so have I. And in response, I've been opening up my windows. I get that nice, fresh air. And I've also noticed that my little fruit trees are starting, the leaves are starting to change yellow, right? Not my big oaks, but those little trees. And so I have just really enjoyed this changing of the season. But how come most of us can tell that there is a change coming, that we can we can sense that coming, right? It's because we've experienced that change before. We know it's here. We know it's coming, so we know what to expect. And you don't need a big billboard that says, hey, the season's changing, right? And even when we're uh, told by the, uh, you know, the clothing industry that the fall is here in July, <laughs> we know that's not true, right? Yeah, we know they're just trying to sell us something. You see, all of us have this innate knowledge that the season is changing because we can feel it, we can sense it, you know, and we've lived through it, right? Well, today I want to have a conversation with you ending this listening series on how to listen to the voice of God, okay? So I want to talk to you about that today, and it's been my prayer in preparation for this that it would become easy, just like you can sense the, the season change, that you can sense when God is talking to you, and you can be attentive to listen. Bow your heads with me, and I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to come even more. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the things that you want to accomplish. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would come and that you'd fill up every nook and cranny of this room, that you would give us clarity of thought, Lord God, and that you would, yeah, I see that, that you would take away any concerns or, or thoughts and worries or even the business uh, uh, of what's going to happen after service, Father, that you just take all that and you would put it aside. Father, we give you our full attention to hear what your spirit would say to us. We need to hear you. And so come and have your way with us today and in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now, I often have people that will come and talk to me about things that are going on in their life, right? And they'll come and they'll say, here it is, Pastor Sharon, can you please help me? And then they'll present with a, <laughs> some kind of an issue. And they'll say, well, what do you think? And so I'll look at them and I'll say, well, I'm going to tell you what I think, but let me direct you to the person that could tell you more about, uh, about you and what's going to happen because that person has been with us and has been consistent for many years and speaking the values and holding them and loves you more than I ever could, right? And that person is Jesus Christ. And so what I see and what I find often is that people will run to other people before they go to the Lord, before they talk to him. And it's almost like there's this question that hangs in the air. Does God really speak to us? Is God really speaking to us today, right? And so there's this question that needs to be answered before we can go to say, how do we listen? And I, on your outline, if you want to pull it out, in Isaiah 55, 2 and 3, it says this. Why, why, 
Why, many, why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what it is not satisfied? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and your soul will delight in the richness of fare. Give ear and come to me. Hear me that your soul may be, live. And so there's this whole idea this whole idea in this scripture that God is calling to us that he is wanting to inbreak into your life, that the spirit of God wants to come and inbreak into your life. He wants to talk to you. So I believe there are many scriptures like this that tells us that God is speaking. It's just I don't think that we're always listening for that voice. And even in John 10, 27, the Lord Jesus Christ himself said, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. And in this analogy, Jesus is the good shepherd and we are the sheep, his people. And there's this call for a relationship where we hear Jesus. We hear his voice and we obey it. We follow it. We go where he asks us to. So again, the question is not, is he speaking to me? But the question is, am I listening? Do I need to turn up my listening ability, right? Now, I want to talk to you about how we can turn it up and we can hear God better. But before I get there, I have to talk to you about three major reasons I see often why people don't hear God. They don't hear him. And I put them on your outline. The first one is the fear factor, right? They're just plain, unadulterately afraid. They're emotionally afraid of, well, gosh, what if God did speak to me, right? What if he broke into my world? What if he did speak to me? What would he say? He knows all the mess ups I've done and all the things. Would he say, hey, kid, you don't cut it. Get out of here, <laughs> right? Would he say that? We see the scripture tells us that each and every one of us have, have made a mistake. Each and every one of us has failed. We've fallen short of the glory of God, right? That's why Jesus Christ had to come. He came, the Father saw us and knew that we were lost. He knew that we needed something. And so he sent his son Jesus to be able to redeem us. That's called accepting him for salvation and being able to be saved and have a way home to be with the heavenly father, which is the cry of father God for us, that we would come in this right relationship with him, right? So if you don't have this relationship, listen, today we're gonna end by doing communion and it's at that time that if you want this closeness, you want this relationship, then you can accept the gift of salvation. As you're taking communion, you just ask the Lord Jesus into your heart, right? It's as simple as that, but it takes your effort. It takes you wanting it for it to happen. And guys, let me remind you, Christ followers, specifically if you have this relationship, right? That when fear tries to enter in and we think God doesn't really want to talk to us because we've just screwed up royally, right? I would, I would challenge you that really it's because we don't understand what salvation is all about. You see, once you've experienced Jesus Christ, you know that you never have to fear God's wrath, ever. No matter how much you mess up, no matter what you do, you can always go before him and say, I'm sorry I messed up, right? So you can always welcome him talking to you. The other thing I see that keeps people from hearing God is the fullness factor. Well, what is that? Well, that's when we chalk our lives so full of stuff, right? So full of activities and work and, and we take our mind and we fill it with all kinds of things like worries and problems and, you know, I got to do this, I got to do that, I got to watch TV and I got to remember what the sitcom was, right? Or how about I got to make sure that my fantasy football players are switched out for the games getting ready to start. You know, we kind of go, go, go and we pack our lives with as much as we possibly can do. And we get so full that we don't have that quiet place. It's where we can't hear God. Busyness is one of the top reasons people cannot hear God. And so you almost have to call the audible in your own life when you get like that. You get running so fast, you have to go, whoa, I need to slow down. Because to hear God, we have to be in a posture of quietness and we have to slow down. It reminds me almost like if, if if your car, you know, you just can't just keep running your car. You got to stop for gas. Well, we need to stop and be filled up. We can't be uh, running so much. So this whole fullness factor with one's life gets in the way of hearing God's voice. And then the last one I want to talk to you is this faith issue. It's a faith issue. Now we know in scripture, it says that faith is the assurance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not yet seen. 
And so this idea of faith is enacted in us when we accept Jesus Christ. And, and what happens as we're going through our journey, I think we're praying and we're wanting things to happen. And when they don't happen, right, the way we think so, we start to wonder, well, what's going on, God? I did my part. <laughs> Where are you? Are you silent? Do you not want to talk? And because of that, we start to see the glass half empty. We start to see what God is not doing. He's not delivering, right? And our faith almost gets crushed, and so does our hope. And so I want to speak to that, because if that's where you are today, I get it. But here you go, as lovingly and as compelling as I can be, that place you're in, if you do not make a effort to move out of it, what happens is you will be sad and bitter and angry and disillusioned. And that's going to like hang on you like a wet blanket and follow you. If you insist on knowing why things don't go the way that you want them to, that's what's going to happen. And so again, I want to call out to you. You see, I've been in places in my life where great disappointment and sadness have come in and ushered in, and, and I wanted to focus in on why, God, why did you allow this to happen, right? But it's at that very moment that God will break in, and he has broken into my life many times. He says, Sharon, I saw you when you were lost, and you were afraid, and you were without hope. I saw you before you were formed in your mother's womb. That's how acquainted he is, not just with me, but with you. He sees us. And he says, because I loved you so much, I sent my only begotten son for you. He sent him for you and for me. And so God loves us like that. And when he reminds me of that, then all of a sudden I begin to realize, oh God, you are in control. You are in control. Even though I don't understand the whys, you do. And you are in control. And there's a saying I, I have when those, those thoughts and things want to come, you know, come into my mind, pop back in that, that faith that gets, uh, that doubt of faith. I always say, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be his name. And what I'm saying in that statement is that, God, I trust you and I don't need to understand why your love is enough and I'm going to follow you. Do you see that? And it almost takes us to have that conscious effort to go forward in that, uh, you know, especially when our faith is being tested or, or we get lost in, in the emotions of things not being answered the way we want them to be. These three factors I brought before you, I spent some time on, I thought about them because I know that these are lies that the enemy, Satan, comes and he sows into us. And if he can get us locked down on these guys, you know, these three things, right? What happens is you and I then are hampered to, to move ahead and to hear what God has to say. And so you have to be courageous to go after them, to call the audible in your life and say, yeah, that, that's me. And again, we're taking communion. It's at that place when we identify with what Jesus Christ did for us, it's at that place that you want to bring these uh, factors, these things that are in your life, you want to bring them before the Lord and give them to him. Okay, now if we're moving forward here from here, I want to talk to you about how can you, uh, uh, you know, hear God more clearly and be able to understand him. But before I even do that, there's a guy, his name is Vince Lombardi. And many of you know, he's a famous, famous coach, right? He was very successful in what he did in the NFL. I really enjoy him. He's a fantastic guy. I love his quotes. And he has this one quote that says this, success demands singleness of purpose. Success demands singleness of purpose, right? And so what I want to say to you today is you want to hear God's word. If you want to hear God in his voice, then you need to have this singleness, this effort of focus on that purpose. I want to hear you, God. It's important, and I'm going to push forward to it. So what are some of the ways that God speaks to us that we can open up, that we can actually look for him to be speaking to us? The first one is in his word. God speaks to us through his word or through the Bible. So foundational, so fundamental, right? Again, to, to quote Lombardi, he's, you know, he would start every season, and this was, a, this was a fantastic man, but he would start every season by holding up a pigskin, right, and saying, gentlemen, this is a football, <laughs> right? 
And these guys are professionals, but he would start there because he never, he never got to this place where he thought the fundamentals should be lost. And so he was always bringing them to people so that they would understand what the fundamentals, if we master the fundamentals, then we'll win the game. If we master the fundamentals of God's word, we hear God, okay? Very important here, very important, so don't miss it. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, it says this about the scriptures. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And so what he's saying here to us is that the word of God, that he put it together, it is his idea, he breathed on it, he inspired it because he wanted it to be used to teach you not your ways, not the culture's ways, but his ways. He says he wants to use it that when you get off, you know, get off track and I get off track, right, in our thinking and our actions, then he wants to use the word to come and line you back up. And he wants to use the word to teach us that we are children of the God most high with a huge inheritance, right? And so he wants to use his word to, to transform our thinking on who we are. Bottom line is the Bible for us is our owner's manual. It tells us how we're to operate so that we can fulfill the purpose that God has for us. Now, I want to open up another dimension that uh, I, I didn't see it at first, but then God opened it up for me and he showed me something and it's in Hebrews 4.12. It says this about the word. For the word of God is living and active Sharper than any double-edged sword, it penetrates even to dividing the soul and the spirit, the joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. And so now we see in God's word, not just that it's instructing us, but it has this penetrating uh, way about it that it can actually get inside of us. And so what's, what the scripture is actually saying is that it's alive. Just as much as I am up here breathing and I'm alive, the word of God is alive. And it's actively working, right? It's working in your life and it's, and it's, and it's dividing out your thoughts and your hearts and, and it's looking at what separating, you know, your will and his will and, and, he, and he's actively working with us. It's this marvelous awareness that the, the word of God is alive and that it carries so much weight. It has so much authority, I was thinking about how do I, how do I, how do I, Lord, how do I present this so that people would get it? And I thought about my mom who's 81, right? She's older now, and so she's given me what they call the power of eternity, eternity, <laughs> attorney, right? The power of attorney. And so what that means is it's just like this ordinary little piece of paper, like everybody else has this ordinary paper, but it has a little seal. And that paper carries so much authority that it allows me to make life decisions for her, right? It's got all this authority associated with it. And all I got to do is walk in and everybody does what I say. I hear that. The word of God does the same thing. The word of God is so powerful. And you don't even know it. You think it's just little pages. And God says, no. If you just open it up and you're just reading it, it releases things in the spiritual realm that affects the physical realm. You just got to open it up and you got to read it. You got to read it. So God is moving mightily through his word. And we just have to listen. <coughs> we just have to listen. That's all. Here's how it works for me. In the morning, I get up, and I've been doing this for 25 years, right? Right? <laughs> In the morning, I'll get up, I get my coffee, because I'm not a morning person, <laughs> and I get my Bible, and I get, you know, my journal, I get my glasses, my pen, and I sit down, and I just open the Bible up to where I've been reading in the scriptures, and I just start to read, and uh, before I start to read, though, I open up my journal, and I write there, come Holy Spirit. Why? Because that's a reminder, I need him to help me to understand what's going on. So I'll say, come Holy Spirit, and I'll say, open my mind open my heart, that I can understand your word, that I can understand it. I want your wisdom. Help me. And so I actually write this in my journal, and then I note what, where I'm reading at, because, you know, you can forget, right? So I note, and then I start to read it. Now, I can fill my journal up with all kinds of stuff, you know, about 
prayer requests, about how I feel, about what's going on, and all this stuff, but I don't. I choose purposely and purposefully to write about what has God shown me in his word? What is he saying to me? And guys, I've been reading the word for a long time, and so I've read those passages over and over, but I can honestly stand before you and tell you that every time I encounter it, God shows me something I didn't see. He shows me a principle that, that even though I knew it was there, that I need to enact it in my life. And you know, he not only does that, he then tells me about things that are going inside of me that I don't even realize when I start to dialogue with him about his word. He shows me stuff. For example, a couple of weeks ago, I was starting um, you know, the new, a, a new book in the New Testament. And so yeah, I started reading it. And it was one of those where Paul's talking to the people that he's writing to. And so the apostle Paul's saying, hey, you guys are doing a great job. Heard good reports. You know, yada, 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 right? And so I'm like, yeah, it's the beginning of a book, right? (laughs) Didn't pay much attention to it at all. But you know, the little voice of the Lord spoke down deep and says, back up, Sharon, back up. This time, I want you to write what's happening here. And I want you to write as I tell you. And so I started to read it just word by word. And I started to write it out. And all of a sudden, the Lord put my name in there. He called my name and he said, Sharon, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of your work. Sharon, I love you. It's very hard to be vulnerable in front of you. I love you. Okay. You're special. And so all of a sudden, all this affirmation that I just read as yada yada, because it's Paul opening up a letter was a direct love word to me. You see, God knew that, I guess, God knew I was depleted, and he knew I needed to be filled up. Even I wasn't even cognizant of it. I knew I was a little tired, but I didn't realize how depleted I had become, but God did. And God knew that he had developed me and made me in such a way that the words of affirmation would speak right down into my soul. And so that's what he did. You know, and as he was sharing with me, I could tell you that it was like pure oxygen for my soul, Right? pure oxygen for my soul. And and, um, for those of you who do have a devotion, you know, we can treat it so many different ways. We can can say, yeah, that's my spiritual checkbox. Boom, did that, right? Or we can say, hey, I'm, I'm looking at it to the principles I need to have. Check, done that, bam. And we can develop this discipline. But I'm gonna tell you, I'm not a very disciplined girl. And I think if I didn't hear the father's voice and he didn't take that to to talk to me personally, I wouldn't do it. I couldn't do it on the consistency that I do. Now, there's nothing special about me. There's nothing special about what I just said because I believe the Father loves us all and he wants to talk to you that way. He wants you to have this time of sitting with him. He wants to interact, not just bam, it's done. Aren't you, you know, you're, you're doing the good things. But he wants to say, slow down. Let me talk to you. Let me share with you because he speaks so mightily through his word. The second way that God speaks is through a gentle whisper. That's what it sounds like. It's a gentle whisper. Now, where do you get this phrase from, right? Well, I get out of 1 Kings 19. And I want to tell you the story there and so you can see the connection. This is about the prophet Elijah, right? Uh, He's this mighty prophet, does these huge things. But he takes on uh, the people of the day in that culture, uh, the prophets of Baal, right? And so he takes them on and he defeats them and he has them all killed. And this makes the queen, who actually runs things, right, makes her mad, Jezebel. So she said, I'm going to get you. I'm going to kill you. Well, that frightens him. And so Elijah takes off and he's running and, you know, he's he's got all this adrenaline and he's exhausted and he just falls down on the ground. He says, God, you know, just take my life. I can't do this anymore. Can you identify with that? I can, right? Just, I just can't do it anymore. And so God, in his loving ways, he provides an angel to come and to minister to him, give him food, give him encouragement. But that doesn't quite pull him up and out of the, uh, the emotional state that Elijah's in. So Elijah goes and hides in a cave, and it's there that he starts to complain again. You're not anywhere around, God. You forgot me. You don't know what I'm going through. And it's like, I'm all by myself. Nobody cares. And so he starts to complain. Now I want you to watch how the God of the universe talks to him. Okay? In 1 Kings 19, starting at verse 11, he says this. 
The Lord said, and he's talking to Elijah, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. He's going to honor him by showing himself to him. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountain apart and shredded the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. Then after the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, and the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. Circle that, a gentle whisper. God was not in the powerful wind and the earthquake or the fire. Instead, God spoke in a gentle whisper. Listen, I told you that story because that's how God speaks to us. He doesn't yell at us. He doesn't have all this fanfare. He speaks to us through this gentle, quiet whisper into our lives. The gentle whisperer is that internal nudge that we get, that quiet voice that we hear in our hearts and in our minds, right? That, that sense of God calling us, do this or do that. It's this gentle, quiet nudge to do things. That's called the leading of the Holy Spirit, by the way, okay? And God directly speaks to us in our hearts and our minds, and he doesn't shout. He's not an angry God. He whispers with loving kindness when he talks to us. And listen, we need to slow down so we can hear it because you can miss it. You can miss it, right? So we need to slow down. Now, when my boys were all little, now they're all growing. One's in grad school, you know, two are in college. They're all older. But when they were little, I would use this phrase with him. You know, when we'd be talking, I'd say, they'd go, why you did that? And I well, because the Lord told me to, <laughs> right? The Lord told me to, and my boys, but they were, they were smart. They'd go, well, what do you mean? What does he sound like? What does God sound like, Mom? You know, and I, I used to kind of smile, and I said, well, sons, they, it sounds like your own voice. He uses your own voice, your own intonation, your own way of talking to you. And when they were little, that meant he talked to them like they would talk to themselves, right? And so he uses that form. That's what he does with us. I think we make it so complicated. What does God sound like? Like maybe, you know, the Ten Commandments, guys. Hello, you know. Or, or even Morgan Freeman did in right? Bruce Almighty. We think he's kind of like that. But really, the scripture tells us no. He uses our language, our intonation. That's how he talks to us. That's how he talks to us. And then my kids, when I would say, you know, he uses our voice and our thoughts and he kind of guides us and stuff, then there's, here's this word, they would say, well then, mom, how do you know it's not yourself talking to yourself, telling you to do it and saying, hey, that God told us to do it. <laughs> and I thought, whoa, you know, he, they're right though, weren't they? We have a great propensity for self-deception. The heart is deceitful. So indeed, this can really happen, right? We can deceive ourselves and fool ourselves into thinking, God told me to do this. And so how do we balance that out? Well, here you go. We balance out that whisper, that quiet nudge that God tells us to figure out if it's him because it lines up with his word. That's why you need to know it. It cannot contradict his word. That's how we know that God is telling us. And then not everything is so plain and clear for us sometime in the word. That is why he gives us the Christian community, an authentic faith community to belong to. It's in there that things get balanced. And it's in this last part that I want to talk to you about, that third part here about, about uh, allowing God to speak through people. Allowing God to speak through people. Now, the obvious uh, example here that I want to show you in Scripture is how God used, uh, used, used to talk through the prophets right? And then when Christ came, things started happening and changing. Again, in Hebrews 1, 1 and 2, it says, in the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in the last days, circle that, in the last days, guys, we are in the last days, okay? But in the last days, he has spoken to us by his son, by his son, Jesus Christ. So what, what it's saying here is that when Jesus Christ left this earth, he left us a comforter called the Holy Spirit that indwells us. And this indwelling is not just for our own purpose, right? The indwelling of, of the Lord Jesus Christ is for every believer, every person that accepts the gift of salvation, God deposits himself in you. Now, there are things you can do to help hear that and bring that up, 
but he deposits it in each and every one of us, and he wants us to use it, not just to hear him and to, in our own life, but also to help those people that he has around us in our community of faith. We're to be using this. And so I want you to be able to know that God speaks uh, to you, and it should check out with scripture, but it also should check out with your community of faith. They should go, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Now, I've asked Pastor Samuel Mead to come up and discuss vineyard groups with you that we have available here. Why? Because you need people. You need that authentic community to belong to. So give him a warm welcome. Thank you. Good morning. Well, as Pastor Sharon said, I am going to just quickly tell you um, what the value of being a vineyard group is, uh, being in one of those is, and what vineyard groups are. Well, vineyard groups, what is the value? Well, it's one of the key ways God speak to, speaks to us. It's one of those key times you can really um, optimize, you know, your listening ears in a sense. It creates an opportunity for you to listen to God and to hear his voice. And that's because, as mom said, God speaks through people. He speaks through people. You know, he speaks through the word and he speaks through the gentle whisper. And those, thing, those are things that can be done by yourself, you know, when you're studying the word and in your own private prayer time. But God can't speak through people when you're by yourself. That's kind of for obvious reasons. But also, he, it's not optimal. He can't speak to you in a large group gathering like this either through people. Now, he does sometimes if you come up for ministry and prayer time or, you know, if you catch somebody, you know, walking through. But, you know, I stand at the front door and I greet people every, you know, almost every week. And I still miss people. And everybody has to walk through those doors. And I still miss people. So a large group gathering like this isn't, you know, the best place for God to speak through people. It's in those small group gatherings that's the best place. And that's exactly what our vineyard groups do. They create a place for authentic Christian community who know you because you've spent the time week in and week out with them. They know you and they're able to speak into your life. And God uses that. He really does. He uses those people to speak into your life. But it's not just one way. God also uses you to speak to people. That's kind of the cool part. It's not just God, you know, speaking to you through people. He also uses you to speak to people. Not just those people in your group, but in a sense, and he also uses you as an evangelistic tool. People who aren't a part of that group, who aren't a part of a church, this church or any church, he can use you to speak to those people. And when you're in a group like that, you allow him to do that. So we're going to do an exercise today. After you probably saw as you were walking in all the tables we had, the different group signs and little boxes and bins. And we're going to, I'm going to tell you about each of those groups. And we're going to, I want to connect you though. If you, you know, if you just want to find out more information, if you want to be a part of a group, if you want to lead a group, or if you just want to make me happy and go through this exercise, we're going to do it real quick. So as our MC Aaron said, everybody got a connect card. And so if everybody can hold this up for me. Beautiful. All right, I like it. All right, now there should, you should have a pencil or a pen. There should be some in the chairs in front of you. Real quick, we're going to write, you know, everybody's going to do this. You're going to write your information. So, you know, your name, I'm going to write my name here. And then your contact information. So your email, your cell phone. Perfect. All right. Okay, and you can continue to fill that out as I talk. So once you've done, finished filling that out, what you're going to do is you're going to take it, you know, bend a little bit, and that helps me, and then you're going to tear it like that, okay? Now this ripped connect card, this is the piece you're going to take with you as you walk out today. And you're going to, you know, look at the different bins, and you can drop your bins in one of those places, and somebody will be in contact with you. Now you'll see the different groups on the wall. We have four different categories. The first one is connect groups. And this one is your traditional study-based group of people who just do life together. You know, it's for everybody. Everybody's welcome just to come on in. They meet, you know, once a week, usually off location at somebody's home. They have food. You know, they'll usually do a time of worship, prayer. And, you know, they just, you know, they study God's word and they do life together. They'll go bowling sometimes, have barbecues. So that's what the connect groups are. Our victory groups are almost the same exact thing, except for it's targeted at people in particular seasons of life. So you have your men's group, your women's group, um, your special needs groups, your, uh, your uh, senior groups. And, you know, we have a young marrieds group. You know, if you just got married or thinking of getting married or have young kids, you know, we have a, we have a group, hopefully, for everybody. And uh, 
The third one is our training groups, and that is kind of our classroom setup groups where we have Financial Peace University where it teaches you how to create, you know, how, how to win with money in a God-honoring way, how to create a budget, and you know, how to live responsibly. We have Vineyard Institute, which is our Vineyard College. Um, and then lastly is our affinity groups. Now this one is our groups based around social events and like our softball group. Um, we have a group that just um, meets up like at Buffalo Wild Wings to watch the football games. Um, we, have, we have a prayer group. You know, they're based around events. And then there, you'll see also, if you look around, you see all these groups and you don't see one that quite fits for you, well, you should lead a group. If there's not a group out there that you think should be there and you have a passion to, you know, see that group a part of our church, we want to get behind that. So you'll see also a box to, um, for leadership if you want to lead your own group. And I encourage you to drop your card in there and I'll be contacting you. So those are all the groups out there. And this is kind of the exercise you're with. So you tear that off if you haven't yet and you can bring it out with you and drop in one of those bins. So when you become a part of a group, you are promoting the opportunity for God's voice to speak into your life. You're putting your listening ears on. You're listening for and to him. And when you do this, you're actively taking care of your spirit. You're allowing God to fill you up. You know, Pastor Shannon said a little bit earlier, she kind of talked about how, you know, you need to put gas into your spiritual fuel tank. If you think about, you have this vehicle that runs all week. And you know, in today's society, we run like 100 miles an hour. You can't go much faster. And But what people get confused is they think Sunday and Saturday services are your gas fill-ups. But they're not. They're actually your oil changes. <laughs> you do those every 5,000 miles. So you can't make it through a week without a gas fill-up. And that's what the vineyard groups are. They're your shells, your exons. They're your place to stop midweek and fill up. And allow God to fill you up so you can make it to that oil change. The truth is you just can't go a week without it. So that's why we want to encourage you to be a part of that. We want to encourage you to be a part of our authentic Christian community and allow God to spiritually fill you up. So I'm going to transition back to Pastor Sharon now as she leads us in communion and concludes. Okay, great, great. Can I have the ushers come up? Thanks, Samuel. And if you didn't know, that's my son. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, he's also a pastor. Right, he's in grad school. Uh, ushers, why don't you grab your stuff and then come on up. I'm going to pass out all the elements to you, but I want you to, to keep hold of it, okay? Don't take it because I want to take the communion together, all right? And as you notice, our worship team, they're going to come back and they're going to play behind us. Now, as I, uh, go ahead, guys, yep. Come on in, just pass it out. Uh, and don't forget me, please. <laughs> okay, great. All right. So as they are passing that out and you're taking it, you're holding it, uh, I want to tell you just one more story, okay? Uh, a lot of times people will talk to me and say, you know, Sharon, how did you learn to be able to know that this is God's voice? Yeah, bring that up. And I would say I learned it in a small group, okay? Which here's, I was so very, very busy, you know? I had, uh, God had blessed me with the three boys when they were small uh, Andy and I had started this church and I was working, right, to, to bring in some income. So there was so much going on, but I met a man who uh, had this propensity to hear where the Holy Spirit was moving and he was like right on almost every time. So I asked him, could he, could he teach me, right? And so he said, sure, I'll be willing to teach you, but you must come to my small group. <laughs> and his small group was he had uh, where he had people coming from out throughout the community and uh, he would pray for them, right? So I said, okay, so here we go. A woman in authority sat under somebody else's authority because I wanted to know how can you hear God's voice? It was very important to me to, to know how to do that. And so I, I did sit under him. I, did, I was part of that small group for over a year. And when I first started going, I would, you know, this little, the way I uh, worked with him is we'd have somebody come in, they would just tell us briefly what was going on, and then we were praying to ask God's direction, right? And because I was a newbie, as he would say, he gave me this little yellow pad, I'll never forget, a little yellow pad of paper, and says, when you think you hear the Lord, write it down. And then I did, and then I would give it to him, and he'd go, you know? And then later we'd talk, he goes, that's more you. That's not the Lord right? And so he helped me to, to be able to differentiate what is my mind, my voice, what is the Lord's voice, and what is the enemy coming in, right? Right. 
So I learned a lot. I learned a lot. But the biggest takeaway I had from that whole year experience of being in this small group was to come to the realization that God loves people. And he sees them and they're hurt and they're in need. And they get so bound up because the issues in their lives are so humongous that a lot of times they can't hear and so they need your help. And you see, it's the love that God has for the person is why he'll speak to us about it so that we can help bring in that healing and give that direction. So as Samuel was saying, it's not just um, something you do for yourself, but it's something you give back to the faith community, to people that need you. Now, why don't you stand up, and we're going to take communion together, and then I'm going to dismiss you. Okay. Why don't you go ahead? We're going to do the bread first. Lift up the bread. This bread that you're about to take represents the uh, body of Jesus Christ, okay? That body that got on the cross that died for your sins and for my sins, for the things that we did wrong, right? And so Jesus asks us to remember his sacrifice. And so if, if you're not sure of your relationship with him, as I said earlier, this is the time to say, Jesus, I accept your gift of salvation and I want you in my life. When you take that bread, you just say that to the Lord. Or if you're one who's struggling with these factors that I talked about, the fullness factor, the fear factor, you know, uh, the faith factor, at this time, you, you're to voice that to the Lord and say, God, help. And you remember, you remember what he did and the love he had for you to give his own life for you, right? And then another thing the Lord spoke to my heart <laughs> last night, there are some of you that are sick, emotionally, mentally, and physically. And the Lord said, bring it before me because my, by my stripes you are healed. And so when you take this bread today, remember what he has done for you. Now, on the night that the Lord Jesus was betrayed, he said, take this bread and eat it, and it is my body. Let's take it together. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That same night, Jesus Christ lifted up a cup of wine, just like we have a cup of juice here, and it represented that his shed blood would mean that you and I have a new covenant. It's what declares that the old person inside of us has died and that the new person that arises is what God is doing in our lives, that the old is gone, that the new is here. It's like this. I was talking to a friend the other day. I was like, it's kind of like when Jesus comes into your life and you accept him, this new covenant, it's almost like he gives you a blank canvas. And he says, now let's, let's paint on it together. All the old stuff that people put on it or you might have, it's all gone. And so every day we can have a fresh new start with Jesus. And so let's take the juice and remember that. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. All right, and I'm going to have you pass your cups inward, and they're going to collect them. And as you can see, my prayer team is moving into place. All right, here you go. We left, we we're trying to leave a little bit of time so you can go through the hallway and to actually take the time to drop in those, those things you filled out so that you can be part of an authentic faith community, okay? That's why we were doing what we were today. Let me uh, just have you bow your heads. I'm going to bless you, and then you're released to go do that. Father God, I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your love. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would open up everybody's mind and their heart, Lord God, that you would in, yeah, deepen, deepen, Father, your people to hear your voice and to follow it, Lord. Give them strength and power to follow it. And Lord, let today be the day that they drew a line in the sand that they would not go through one more day without hearing you and following you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for listening to this week's message. We hope you enjoyed it. 
don't hesitate to write us your story at amen at vmchurch.com. And we'll see you next week.